I'm Dave Ford. In this video, I'm going to show how when using Moodle, we can create a drag and drop activity where the students have to complete a Venn diagram. And I'm using a question type called the drag and drop markers. Now it's going to be quite tricky to set this up the first time from scratch, but I've got a template that will be shared with you and the notes for that will be in the notes, uh, which makes this a much easier task. So here is an example of an activity that's been created in Moodle. So you've got some instructions there. There's a list of countries and what the students have to do is drag a marker and there's one marker for each country. They've got to drag that into the correct position on the table. So if I take GB for, for United Kingdom, um, it has a monarchy and it's in NATO, but it's not in the Eurozone. So that would go into that section of the Venn diagram there. Uh, Switzerland which has the code CH, um, they're not in any of the three, so they would be outside, uh, etc. So you would just go through and drag all the items, students can then check, and they get feedback telling them whether it's right or wrong, uh, etc. So we're going to have a go at creating one of these. Now, the example I'm going to use is I'm going to use a maths example, where there'll be a series of numbers, and they have to be categorised as whether they're prime, square, or even. So the first thing you do is you draw out your end product. So the diagram that you want with the things that you're going to drag in the correct final position. So that there is my final position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Moodle. Now, what you do is you go into your question bank and you need to add a new question type called drag and drop markers. If you do not have that, then you need to contact your Moodle administrator to get them to add it, uh, add the plugin so you can use it. So you select that, you click on add, and it will take you in. Now I've already started creating one, just to make things a bit quicker. So I've already given it a name. I've put some text into the question text box. I've given it a default mark, so that's the number of points they get if they get it all correct. Now, normally I would put some feedback in. I haven't done this just yet, um, but that's something you can do hopefully uh, relatively easily. Now, where it gets uh, interesting is when we come down to the preview section. Now, the first thing we have to do is upload a background image, which has to be of a certain size. Now, to make it easier, I've created a PowerPoint template, which will have been shared with you, which is set to be the right size. So you don't have to worry about the size, you just use this template. Now on the third page is the actual, uh, the third slide is the bit that you want. Now the key here is that you do not alter the size or the position of the three circles. They have to stay exactly as they are. You can change the uh, titles of the, um, of the circles. In this case, I've already done it just to speed it up, uh, but you just change those yourself. You can move those around quite happily, uh, but don't move the circles. So once you've labeled your three circles and given it a title, what we need to do is save this slide as an image. So to do that, we go file and save as. Now, rather than saving it as a PowerPoint presentation, we're going to save it as a PNG file. And we're going to give it a name and we're going to save it. Now it asks me, do I want to save all of the slides or just this one? I just want the one slide, which is the third slide. So I click just this one and it will have now saved that as an image in the folder that I'd selected uh, during that process. So I come back to Moodle and here is the image that I've just uh, saved in my folder. And all I'm going to do is just drag and drop it into that area there and it will upload it and you will see it appearing with this grid uh, kind of layout on top. Now you don't see the actual grid when you come to do the question, that's just to help you uh, when you're lining up the correct drop zones. If you can't do drag and drop, you can just choose a file and find wherever you saved it. Now the next stage is to identify the markers. Now I had 10 in that example I showed you. I'm only going to do the first five just because it's quicker on the video. So the numbers that I'm going to drag are 1, 2, 4, 11 and 15. And I only want one of each. So there's going to be one of each number to drag into my uh, end uh, result. If you need more than six, you just click that button and it will give you more and you can just keep 
clicking it until you get the number that you require. So we've identified the markers. What we now need to do is identify the drop zones. So you click on the drop zone bit. And what I'm going to do on the right is I'm going to select the markers that I've already uh, added above. So I've got the five markers as such. Now what I have to do is work out the coordinates for the drop zone for each of these options. And there's three shapes I could use. I could use a circle, a polygon or a rectangle. Now you might think that circle would be obvious here, but it's not a circle that I want, it's actually a polygon. Because for example, if I have something that is a prime number, but not a square number, and not an even number, it's going to go into this pink section here. But the actual drop zone is, is what my mouse is currently tracking. So it's not a circle, because it's got to follow those edges. So that's the zone there. So it's actually going to be a polygon. And they're all going to be polygons in this case. Now with the normal way that you would do this, is you would go around and you'd start at one edge and you'd record the coordinates. And you can probably just see them below the grid. Uh, you've got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, and then you move slightly and record the coordinates. And you keep doing that uh, until you've kind of described your shape. Now that will take quite a lot of time and be quite clumsy. So what I've done is I've done that bit for you. So if we go back to our PowerPoint files, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show the two side by side. So we've got the template file, which looks like this. This is the one that you've been given. And then next to it, I'm going to put my file, which has got the uh, thing that we are creating in our example here. So I'm going to find the coordinates for one. Now, one needs to go into the section, which is a prime number and a square number, but not an even number. So it's this section here. And I look on my template, and that's the one that I've identified as section number four. So the number one is going into section four. If I look in the notes section, I've got the coordinates that I need. So rather than having to work it out, all I need to do is highlight that set of coordinates, go back into Moodle and paste. Now, once you've put one in, if you scroll back up, it will actually draw the section for you and it will put that in the right position. So you can check that you've got the coordinates right. That is the correct position for the number one in the end product. So I go on to the next one, which is number two. So number two is gonna appear in this section here, which is, in my case, is section number six. So again, I go and find the coordinates for section number six, and I copy, and I paste. And I'll just quickly go and check that I've got it right. As you can see, it's put it into the right position. So my next number is the number four. So that's going to go into this section on the right. It's an even number and a square number. That is section number five. So I need to find the coordinates for section number five. So I copy those. Number 11 is in this section, it's a prime number, but it's not a square or an even number. So that is section number one. So we copy that. And then finally, the number 15, as you can see, the number 15 is outside of the three circles. So in my diagram, that is represented by the number eight. And we just scroll down, we find the coordinates for section eight which we copy and we pop those in there. I'm going to save changes. And we're now going to look at the final result. So there's my question. There's the diagram. There's my markers, which make it slightly bigger. And then we can drag them in. So the number one would go there. The number two would go there. Four goes there, 11 there, and 15 is outside, that can go there, submit and finish, and I can see that I've got it correct. So by using this template, in a short amount of time, in this case it's taken me less than 10 minutes to create that particular question type. Um, 
much easier than trying to do it from scratch every time. The key is, is you have to use that PowerPoint template. You don't change the position of the circles because if you did, the coordinates wouldn't line up correctly. Um, and all you have to do is identify your markers and then uh, identify which is the correct drop zone. There's eight of them in total in the PowerPoint file. Each of the circle or the sections and outside has a different red number. That's the drop zone. And you then just have to find the correct coordinates that correspond. If the things that you want to drag are quite long, in this case, it's quite easy because they're like numbers. But if it was like words and it might get a bit confusing, you just set up a key. So you have a key in the instructions. So one equals this, two equals that, three equals that. And then they drag the markers uh, relating to the key. There will be other templates created for other drag and drop activities. For example, a two uh, circle Venn diagram or a SWOT analysis type uh, two by two grid. Um, so look out for other similar videos and similar templates that will be created.